morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time and a wonderful, beautiful day to be in the presence of our King. This morning, we're going to worship the Lord who is worthy of our praise, worthy of our worship. And so before we do that, let us bring our thoughts and our minds, our attention to the King of all kings. As we stand to our feet this morning and as we prepare ourselves to offer up our thanksgiving, our offerings of praise, our worship to the one true living God, may the Holy Spirit come and have his way in our lives and in our midst this morning. This day when we are before the table of the Lord, we remember his suffering, his death on the cross, but more than that and greater than that, his victory over death and hell. And this morning as we remember all of that with a grateful heart, we say thank you Jesus for all that you've done. And so this morning before we begin singing our songs, may I invite you to close your eyes at this time and just focus your attention on this one true loving God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us have a heart which is grateful. As Psalmist David said, enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Can we lift our hands to heaven this morning and with a grateful heart say, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. You gave your life so that we may have life. You gave yourself uh, that we might live. And we thank you for the victory which you won on the cross because your victory became our victory. And because you live, we live. Because you are victorious, we are victorious. Because you are an overcomer, we are more than conquerors. We thank you for all of this which is made possible only because you, you Lord, rose victorious from the grave and today you are at the right hand of your Father. Lord, this day we ask that even as we lift our voices, as we lift our hearts and our hands to you, we ask that you would be glorified, you would be exalted, and you would be lifted up. Come have your way in this place, hallelujah. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name, blessed be your name, praise God. And as we sing, I encourage you to lift your voices, to clap your hands, and let your heart rise up to this God who is worthy of your praise, hallelujah.
Thank you for your grace. You gave your very best, your very best. You gave it all. You gave it all. The Word of God teaches us that once Jesus Christ is within our lives, in our hearts, it is no longer we who live it is no longer the I that lives but it is Christ that lives within each one of us or should live within each one of us so every good thing every wonderful thing that is portrayed from within us is because of Christ who is living within us With a grateful heart, let us worship Him this morning. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is 
is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. strange and divine I can sing all is mine yet not I but through Christ in me Hallelujah Oh how strange The night is young dark but I am not forsaken for by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is Hallelujah. His oh, yes. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend.
Hallelujah. This morning. Oh, what a joy. What a joy. What a joy. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Christ within us. Christ in us. This Christ who set us free. He will lead us to that glory. To his glory evermore. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
from a grateful heart today from a heart that says Lord you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all from my heart to the heavens you be the center Lord Jesus oh center of my life be the center of my home oh be the center be the center oh be the center of this church yeah, be the center of it all heart dear Lord we stand in your presence saying thank you thank you thank you you have done it all for us there's nothing left for heaven to give us there is nothing left for heaven to do there is nothing left for you to do oh God now it is just entirely up to us and so Holy Spirit of God I pray that even as we're seated in your presence this morning you would come have your way I'd like to share a thought with you as we prepare our hearts to enjoy this beautiful fellowship. We call the Lord's Supper or the communion or the table of the Lord or the last supper that Jesus, when he sat with his disciples for the celebration of the Passover Supper, and during that supper, he inaugurated this Lord's Supper for the New Testament believers. 
and i just like to read a passage from the gospel according to st mark chapter 6 from the story from the story of uh, jesus feeding the multitude of people with five loaves and two fishes since it is a long long passage i will i will i won't read the in the all the whole passage but i will just read the passage from which i would like to pass on to you uh, a thought that might be a blessing to all of you now in the past some of you heard my messages very often i refer to these passages because there is so much and every time i think about it there is something fresh and this morning i would like to pass on to you a, a, a thought in uh, something to uh, some some addition to what we have been thinking in the past 3 weeks unless a kernel of wheat a grain of wheat falls into the ground into the soil and dies it remains just a single seed but if it dies what happens it dies and out of that death comes forth a new life a glorious life a heavenly life out of that life comes forth we produce many 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 fruit seed that is what we have been th thinking about the necessity of dying falling into the soil and dying and we also uh, considered the three ways by which we can use our lives in the same way three ways we can use the seed and i am sure you had are been blessed by those thoughts and i pray that the holy spirit will continue to minister to you um through this word now from this story i would like to read you know the background and you know the whole story of the feeding of a multitude with the five loaves and two fishes and i read from verse 39 <clears throat> and jesus commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and he gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fishes divided he among them all and they did all eat and were filled remember there must have been about 12 to 15000 people 5000 men alone and women always outnumber men and then there are children and all together we can safely conclude there must have been about 12 to 15000 people i am reading from mark chapter 6 verses 39 and they did all eat and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5000 men and i am sure women also ate i don't know why they record only men 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 so don't worry women you are all included than in the men praise god the i straight away without any introduction straight away went to, to the point that i want to say number 1 for a miracle for an outstanding miracle what did 
Jesus use? He used that which was available. That which is available. You offer to him what is available to you. He is not asking for anything extra. He is not asking for anything big. He is not asking for anything that you don't have. And sometimes we hesitate because what we have is nothing. It is, I am ashamed to bring that to you, Lord. And Jesus is telling you through this, you don't need to be ashamed. You don't need to hesitate to bring me what you have. I am not asking for anything extra, anything you don't have, anything big or anything extraordinary. No, all that I am asking is to bring what you have or to bring yourself what you are and what you have just as I am, that beautiful evangelistic song we sing, just as I am without one plea. Just come. And he accept what you offer, and out of what you offer, out of what you give, out of what you surrender, out of what you submit to him, for him to do what he pleases to do, he performed that amazing, one of the greatest miracles that the world has ever seen. That which you have when you offer it to him, you are giving to him something from which he can perform a multiplication miracle. Multiply it so abundantly. Are there any examples in the Bible? We have so many examples. Let me remind you one such example. Moses. God was trying to get him go back to Egypt. And to deliver his people and bring them out of Egypt from slavery. And Moses was giving all the excuses that he could find in all the books that he read. Or all the degrees that he earned. And at the end of it all, he was a shepherd, you know. And the shepherd always carry a stick. And Moses, the first thing God told Moses was, Moses, you remove your shoes because the place you stand is a holy place. How many of you believe that this is a holy place right now at this moment? What made that place holy that moment? It was the same ground Moses and his sheep many times trampled on that ground and dirtied that ground. But that particular moment, suddenly that place was transformed in the most holy place on, on earth. What made it holy? Because the presence of a holy God was there, come down. And if you believe that you have come to this place this morning because you said, I am going into the house of God. And if you believe that you walked inside uh, sensing and to experience and to enjoy the very presence of a holy God, you are right. And how many of you feel that this morning? Hello? I am in a holy place. You are in a holy place. And we need to treat each other respectfully. And above all, we need to treat the presence of this holy God with all the reverence and the fear and respect because he is 
holy. We are not worthy to be in his presence. And yet he considered us and he has come down to be in our midst this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lift up our hands and praise God. And he removed the shoes. And at the end he asked, Moses, you are telling all these excuses. What is in your hand? What are you holding on? Even then, he removed the shoes, but he never gotten rid of that staff. He was holding on to it. <laughs> and he said, it's a shepherd's staff. A dry stick. Moses has been carrying that stick ever since he became a shepherd for 40 years. And here is one example of what it means to die. I tell you how. What did God, Moses said it is a shepherd's staff, and what did God say to him? Moses, why don't you drop it? Instead of holding on to that staff, you just drop it. And Moses dropped it. And the moment it touched the ground, it became a living snake. And a living snake is a problem. Don't you think so? And how many of us have faced snakes very often in our lives? And the first reaction of Moses was what? To run away from the snake. And God called him back, Moses, come back. Running away will never solve the problem of a snake. Wherever you go, you will find the same snake. What God is saying is, the only way you can solve any problems or deal with any situation is to confront it. As Moses said, pick it up by its tail. You handle it, you grapple with it. And in grappling with it, not in your own strength, but I am telling you to grapple with that snake. Because Moses was being sent to Egypt, as you know, one of the most important and symbolic things in Egypt is a serpent. You would see it on the crown of pharaohs. And as soon as they picked it up, it became the same stick. What happened? It is a good illustration of dying. Between his dropping it down and picking it up, a big transaction took place. That's what made the difference to that stick. Moses was the owner till that moment. What God was trying to help Moses understand is, Moses, you disown the staff, and I will pick it up, and I will become the owner. That was the transaction that took. The moment you submit anything, to God. It is God's. It is not yours. If I surrender my life to God, my life is no longer my life. It is His life. My life is no longer mine. It is His life. This life is His. I don't belong to myself. What happened to me? I was dead. What happened in Moses' case? The old owner is dead. That's what God was looking for. 
unless it has fallen from the hand of Moses, the old Moses, the owner, is dead. Now it has a new owner, God. And you know what happened with that. Ever since that day, that road was never referred to as Moses' road. You read the book of Exodus. It was always referred to as God's road. And you know what Moses could do with that road owned by God? In all the miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Amazing miracles. Everything was performed by the use of that rod. The Red Sea was divided by the use of that rod. Water from the rock were by the use of that rod. All the miraculous signs. All because Moses was willing to drop it and he died along with it. And when Moses, God picked it up, he picked up Moses as well and placed that thing in Moses' hand. And he said, you go with it. What you submit to God and surrender to God, it is not to remove anything from you, but it is to give you back what he took, but with one difference. You no longer say it is mine or I am mine. It is God's. Hallelujah. Are you willing this morning? When I submit to him my plans, when I submit to him my life, when I submit and surrender to him, when I allow God to take the ownership of my plans and my future, he takes care of my future. He takes care of the life. He takes care of all the plans. And he will shape the plans according to his will. And he will give them back to in my own hand. And since then, that moment, oh, it all depends on me how and why I use what God has taken and then returned to me. Problems, we carry the problems. God says, cast it all on my burden, or shoulders. And you breathe, it is no longer your problem. As a child of God, my problem is his problem. He owns it. And he knows how to handle it. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our hands and praise God? God is here in this place. We are in his presence. This is a holy ground. And you leave this place as a new person to walk with God, with his. He accept what you offer to him. And then, with that, he perform wonders, miracles, amazing miracles. You couldn't even imagine. Dare to believe God and dare to surrender yourself and all you have to God. Let it be small, insignificant in, uh, compared to what some others can offer to God. We don't have a crores or rupees. We don't have a silver or gold. <sighs> but you have something. If you want to multiply what you have, Surrender it to God. Your talents, your abilities, nothing compared to others. Your singing, 
he's playing and uh, something that like what you can do is so small insignificant but do you want your talents what do you have to multiply then surrender it to god he will multiply it in second kings chapter 4 there is a widow of a prophet she had two sons and her husband died and the creditors were coming to take her two sons as slaves and the woman ran to elisha the prophet and told him his problems and he said what can i do what do you want me to do and then he asked what do you have in your home he said i have a small bottle and that bottle has some oil that's all i have that was enough for god to do the impossible and get her out of her difficult situation and set his her son free and give her back her son and enough money and more and he said that's enough you go home send your sons to your neighbors and let them collect as many pots as possible don't just bring a few but as many and these two sons went towards the two directions collecting all the pots from their neighbors and the neighbors were wondering what in the world these young fellows are doing they are collecting all the pots and carrying it to their home and they brought i don't know how many the bible doesn't say let us not worry about something that god has no answer for us as many as they could find they brought and then the command was when you get all the pots take all the pots into one room and your sons go in and you go in and shut the door and you begin to pour that oil into these pots and that is what she did pour one after the other one after the other one after the other from that small bottle of bottle the oil began to flow and to flow it never stops and they brought one after the other the pots and the next 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 and i don't know how many next they built and then the, there was no more coming then she shouted to the son bring another one and they said there is no more and then the flow stopped the flow stopped only when they said there is no more pot if there are more pot the oil would have continued to flow what is the lesson the key to your miracle is in your own house don't look anywhere else it is in your own house what you need to do is to listen to the voice of god's word listen to the voice of the word of god and follow the instructions given in god's word and conduct your life miracles will happen and they continue to happen until you confess there is no more room for me to take any more miracle hallelujah hallelujah believe my brothers and sisters this god is our god too he has not changed he is the god of the old testament time and the new testament time he does not have any old and new he is ever the same he is still the same god the key to miracle 
is in your own house. Don't go running anywhere else. Go back to your home. After listening to the voice of his word. And at his word, you act. Peter act, acted the word of God. And he actually walked on the troubled waters. God uses that which is available to him. So go home tonight before you sleep as a family gather together and say let us do one thing. Let us just give to God everything we have and everything we are. And that is enough for God to do the impossible. There are several lessons. One more lesson I will touch and then we will go. He does something to what you give to him. The first thing he did was what? Lifted it up and he blessed the bread. The first thing he's going to do with what you surrender to him is to bless. If you don't have anything at a, not even a drop of oil, what you need to do is to you come yourself and God, I am here. I don't have anything to bring with me, but I am here. That's all. Completely, body, soul, and spirit. And if you have some education, give it to him. Some ability, give it to him. This is what I am able to do. Lord, this is what, you know, I can just, I can't do much in the church, but I can bring a bunch of flowers and keep it here, keep it here for them. One sister does, and very faithfully every Sunday morning, this. Do you think it is unnoticed by God? It is very much noticed. <laughs> and something like that. Lord, this is what I can do. And whatever it is, he takes it and he blesses it first. And that's what he's, he's going to do with what you surrender to him. And yourself. Surrender to him. Give yourself to him. And the first thing he's going to do is to bless it. Hallelujah. To be blessed of God is something more than that anything else that you want. Jacob was willing to give, willing to be broken physically, broken spiritually, and broken in every sense in order to be blessed of God. He remained physically broken till the end of his life. But he was a blessed man. That's what he wanted. Don't you want to be blessed of God, my brother, my sister? And I say this, when God's blessing is upon you, there is nothing else that you need. One small boy was reciting Psalm number 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd and that's all I need. <laughs> the Lord's blessing is all what you need in your life. You don't need a bungalow or a palace. You don't need a, a special car. You don't need even a motorcycle. You don't need even a cycle. All you need is his blessing. And with his blessing, you can do the impossible. All things are possible with those who are blessed of God. Hallelujah. 
with God's blessing I can do all things through Christ with God's blessing I am more than a conqueror with God's blessing I can climb and cross the high hills and mountains with god's blessing i can walk and i will not faint with god's blessing i can run and i will not faint with god's blessing i can do amazing things so that the people the world is surprised hallelujah with god's blessing you be a blessed man of god or a woman that's all you need i am blessed of god so many people giving testimony i get so angry don't worry it is a holy anger oh god blessed me because god blessed me i couldn't come for the last five sundays the church why we know that it was a paddy season and uh, plowing and sowing and uh, there are so many servants i got to five sons and all of them three are in america two are in the gulf they're all oh god has blessed me brother and uh, because of all this i am alone here children are not here so i have to do everything so uh, i could not attend the church for the last five sundays <laughs> and i was sitting there and listening i wanted to pick up the chair i was sitting on and throw him take this blessing also god bless and now you have a job and you have a house and you have all kinds of things god blessed that is not the blessing when god blesses you are, even in your wildest dream you could not imagine what you were going to experience that's what happened to jacob after god blessed him oh, he went to egypt he stood before pharaoh and he blessed pharaoh and pharaoh considered him as a father and he, he he went there and he saw his son whom he thought all these years eaten up by wild beast and he had the privilege of a dying on joseph's lap and the blessing joseph's children you talk about blessing of god that's what god does something that you could not even imagine can happen to you it can happen when god blessed you and god will not force anything from you and then bless he who voluntarily happily surrendered to him yourself and all what you have then he accept them and then he put his blessing the miracle of that multiplication did not happen when jesus picked up and lifted it up and blessed it it did not happen there but i tell you what happened when he blessed the bread the potential of multiplication as entered into each one of those bread but it didn't come open until the disciples obeyed what was placed in the hands of the disciples who were the broken pieces that is the third thing he does what he received he accept what he accepts he blesses and what he blesses then he breaks that breaking is what we are not willing 
But without brokenness, you cannot multiply. So it is necessary for him to break what he blesses. You are a blessed person, you will be broken. Why? Because you don't belong to yourself. By breaking, you become a means of feeding multitude of people. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus went to the cross. You know where the, and when the miracle happened? When Jesus blessed, the element of miracle has already entered into the bread. And it was that he broke. And it was that broken pieces he given to the disciples. And the miracle began to happen when the believing, obedient disciples began to distribute. The miracle happened. Hallelujah. It is in our hand. God gave the road back to Moses. And Moses, in obedience, he began to use. It was he who must use the road. And by using the road, he experienced the miraculous. The amazing miracles. Hallelujah. And I say this to all of you this morning, that we battle with snakes and we battle with mountains and we battle with all kinds of storms and fire in our lives. But we will be able to handle and do face all this victoriously if we are willing to surrender ourselves and know anyway I don't belong to myself. If I die, I die. That determination has to be there. With that determination, you face your snake. You face your mountain. You face your storm. You face your fire. The fire may be increased its power seven times, but that is okay. But in the fire, you will see him standing by your side. <laughs> Hallelujah, walking with you. Let us pray. While Jesus took the bread in that upper room, pardon me, I want all of you to stand. I just feel in my spirit right now that I need to pray for you and I need to pray with you. I don't know what you are facing, but I do know one thing. All of us battle with this kind of problem. The problem of snake and problem of mountains and storm in the form of sickness. Something you are not able to handle. What is it? Is there any area in your life that lying there not yet obeyed? Not yet surrendered? Bring it to Jesus. Drop it at his feet. Let him have it. 
and in obedience you do what god is commanding you to do he commanded the disciples to take these pieces and distribute and in that service the bread kept on multiplying there's a message god is giving to this church this morning he has placed so much talents and abilities people in this congregation what are we doing with us we need to release ourselves and we need to release people our children and every one of you to god we become properties of god and he will do what is impossible and in your situation what you surrender to him that is enough for him whatever your situation may be i want you to surrender to god and not to be afraid of it any longer and not to be tensed about it rejoice always in the lord and again i say rejoice let your gentleness be known to all for the lord is near and do not be anxious over anything but in everything with petition you bring with thanksgiving supplications and petitions with thanksgiving you bring all those things to god and then the peace of god that passes all understanding will guard your minds and your hearts in christ jesus you want your minds and your hearts to be kept and protected hallelujah jesus sister gayatri let us not worry about the situation we are facing it is his business it is his ministry i know one thing that what god begins he will complete it when god calls you he gives you the enablement it is you not your money or your talents your abilities you are looking or how big you are or how what is your status in the society no 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 not your position or the position what he is looking for is your availability and availability of all that you have to him let him have it like a star if i perish i perish like the three hebrew children even if our god does not save us from your fire we still will not bow before your idol hurra bashakara bashi alama lift up our hands to god in the name of jesus lord we thank you for your blessing upon us we believe you have blessed us and as blessed people lord we can expect a great marvelous manifestations and revelation and a great revelation of your power working in us who are weak and every one of us are standing here is facing some problem in his or her life This morning I pray in Jesus name that may our faith be rooted and grounded in your unchanging word which says cast on my burden your burden upon my shoulder because I care for you and when God cares for me hallelujah if God is with me who can be against me If God is for me what can the world do to me because I am protected and saved by his power 
Lord, I pray that you bless your people. We are prayed for those who needed healing, like Sonia's mother. This morning, Father God, we thank you that the amazing miracle. She may be a little elderly, but that doesn't make any difference. You can renew her strength. And of this we believe for everyone. You know that you remember the 11-year-old, that Muslim girl in Delhi? She had her operation and the doctor was very satisfied with that operation. She's there. And we believe that God is going to manifest his power and his glory in that home where that little girl is. Do you believe that? Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Let everyone praise the Lord. Every one of you just worship the Lord. And I encourage you not to leave this place still burdened and worried. Leave this place with a confidence that my burden is no longer upon me. It belongs to God. And that is where you use the key to miracle. The key to your miracle is lying within you and lying in your home. Thank you, Father, for touching us. In Jesus' name, amen.